straight to a Fox News alert. The Saudi Minister of Defense, who is MBS's brother, actually, is set to visit the White House today and will be meeting with senior Biden administration officials to discuss the war in Israel. All right, here, here this comes on the heels of President Biden holding an emergency phone call with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, urging him to protect innocent Palestinian civilians in Gaza, allow them to access to humanitarian aid. And right now, airstrikes continue along the Israel-Gaza border. You can see them right there. Look at all that smoke. As Fox News learns, officials from the Jewish state met with Qatari negotiators over the weekend to discuss releasing the 239 people being held hostage. Trey Yinks joins us live on the ground in southern Israel. What's the latest on the ground invasion, Trey? Yeah, hey guys, good morning. We do have some new information for you breaking right now. Fox News has learned that a high level Israeli official, in coordination with the United States, visited Doha on Saturday to meet with Qatari negotiators. The discussion focused around the hostages and how to further those talks to get more hostages released. That information from an official who was briefed on the visit. We're also learning more about how the escalation on Friday night began. This source telling Fox that talks had stalled on Friday due to disagreements on the technical aspects of a potential deal. The talks did continue on Saturday and were described by this source as productive. All of this comes as Israeli forces are now operating in the Gaza Strip behind me. I want to show you what it was like just two hours ago. You can see right here Israeli troops operating inside the Gaza Strip. What you're looking at is a tank on the edge of Gaza. The Israelis telling Fox News today that they are ramping up their efforts, sending more infantry troops into the Strip. The level of destruction is significant. Over the past 24 hours, Israel hit more than 600 targets inside Gaza. We can hear fighter jets overhead and the artillery units working in the distance as day 24 of the war unfolds. Even as we speak, the Israelis are launching illuminator rounds into Gaza, marking their next targets. We have some video of those forces operating on both the western and eastern side of Gaza. We were just on a hilltop looking into Gaza, and you can see plumes of smoke rising up from many different locations. The spokesman for the Israeli military, Daniel Hagari, talking today about the situation. Take a listen. Over the past day, we have expanded ground activities with additional forces entering the Gaza Strip, including infantry, armored corps, combat engineering, and artillery corps. Through integrated strikes of the ground forces and the IAF, dozens of terrorists were eliminated last night who had barricaded themselves in buildings and attempted to attack the forces that were moving in their direction. I want to explain and provide an example. We are conducting expanded ground operations in the Gaza Strip. You can see the aftermath of Israeli strikes here inside Gaza, complete blocks leveled and reduced to rubble. I've been talking with Palestinian civilians in the Strip today. They say the Israelis have destroyed the two main access roads to the northern part of Gaza, effectively cutting off the south from the north as those infantry troops continue to push deeper into the Strip. We expect these activities to continue throughout the day, the roar of fighter jets overhead as the Israelis target other positions inside. Guys, back to you. So, right. so Trey, the unrest within the, the political unrest with Benjamin Netanyahu offering an apology after a tweet that really alleviated himself from any blame on October 7th and him coming and apologizing later. How much is this unrest and Benjamin Netanyahu not really doing much outside that speech the other day playing into how this, uh, this invasion is uh, prosecuted? I would point to the remarks that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu made when he was joined by his war cabinet and his defense minister, Yoav Gallant, the other night, as they were talking about the situation on the ground and the decision to enter the next phase of this war. Netanyahu that night said that questions will need answers, and not just from his cabinet and from the intelligence heads here in Israel, but also from himself. And there is a lot of frustration. Questions remain in Israel about how the security breach on October 7th could take place. The Gaza border was touted by the Israelis as the most advanced and most secure border in the world. And yet Hamas was still able to infiltrate into southern Israel and commit that massacre, slaughtering more than 1,400 people. So the questions remain, but the focus now for Israeli officials is the conflict raging on behind me and ensuring that it doesn't unravel to the rest of the region. 
All right, Trey, thank you so much. Thanks, Trey. Be safe out there.